Here's another more advanced tutorial now on QLab, and I'm going to show how to use it with a Stream Deck and how to basically configure the Stream Deck to do some pretty cool things. And this is a little bit more of an advanced show, but you'll get an idea of what the capabilities are. So in this show, I've got two queue lists. And the purpose of these two queue lists is I want one to be hidden, but controllable via our Stream Deck. And that way, they don't have to ever go in as an operator and modify anything there. It's preset for them. It's the same for every performance. So in the show content queue list, we do have some content that's going to change per show. And you can see all those slides here. So the operator would slide in the appropriate slide. And those are all set up on the specific layer and the ordering that they need to be. So it's ready to go there. And then they can go through like normal. So I'm going to show you how to set up the stream deck to control these as well as how to control our master scene, which is basically this setup right here in this queue list. And I put some notes in here because basically all these groupings do what we need it to do. It's pre-configured. I'm not going to go through that for this purpose of the demo, but you get the idea here if you're familiar with QLab. And basically I've assigned hotkeys. That's why I wanted to show is the hotkeys. So basically when we go to this item, we know that, for instance, this is going to need to be triggered with hotkey one, then hotkey two takes this off, so forth and so on, all the way down. So I've listed all my hotkeys and, and pre-designed those. So now that I can see what those are and I've referenced them in the group titles here, I can slide over my Stream Deck controller and set this up. So in Stream Deck, if you scroll all the way down under system, there's something called hotkey switch. And that's going to save us some really good real estate on the screen here, because while you could map these one to one as a hotkey and basically say, you know, I want this to be number one. I think the easier thing to do is to instead get rid of that and use this hotkey switch where you have two instances. So to click to assign, we'll make it one. And then we know two is the logo off here. So what I would do is hit click to assign, hit two. And now I could even call this logo. And as you can see, I already made one up there, but that's the idea behind all of this. And then I've gone ahead and color coded all these combinations of groups. These actually are set to go over top of the slide layers, which contain the content in the specific QLab file I showed you earlier in this queue list. So we'll go back to that. And what we need to do now is we need to set this up to be a go button and that kind of thing. So let's go to a hotkey here and let's set this up to be our go button. In fact, we'll do it on this one down here. And I'm gonna hit space bar and I'm gonna call this go button actually. And I don't even need to do that because I have an icon set here. So what I'm going to do is go to the library. And if you don't have this, that's okay, because you can get it. So if I go into my user profile here, let's go ahead and find the QLab icon set. And we're gonna be doing this for QLab 5. So let's go ahead and Go ahead and install this. It's now installed. And that means if I slide over my library, you can see it right here. And so what I wanna do is, now I'm done with the marketplace, so we'll get rid of that. I wanna actually assign the go button. So I'm gonna drag that right in here. And there's my go button. And if I really wanted to, I could make it very specific and say go. That way there's no question as to what it is. And if I want to do a fade and stop all, we can do that. But let's, let's go up and down and navigate a little bit. So we'll go with a hotkey here. And we'll call it previous. Harrow up. 
like that. And then we're going to do another hotkey. We'll drag and drop it in. And then it will make these blue just to be easier to see with the white text. So if we come down here, There we go. Now we've got some good contrast. And we've got an iMag shot that shows up under our frame. We've got a logo that can go over top of everything. We've got various groups of these slides. We've got our go button, our previous, our next state. So if we want to test this, we can take a look and see what this looks like to make sure it is working. And if we put ourselves in show mode, and you can see it goes down just like we want. Perfect. The only thing I might want to do is I might want to add a stop here. So we'll do another one. We'll go to our icon pack. And I'm going to hit this one here. There is a go button here too. So actually looking at this, I might change this. Um, and just make this one with no title and simply replace it with that. And then one of the other things you can do too, if you're doing live theater, is you could maybe give yourselves a little timer and you could say, how many seconds is it? You know, something like that. And you could do the math, you know, 15 minutes and, and fill that in. So if you did, that it would be 900 seconds. And you don't need a sound necessarily maybe for it, just, just for yourself, just so you know. And now you've got all this configured and you've got your little break time. So let's test this out and see how it works. I've got some test slides in there. We'll go into our test frame here. And if I wanted to load up that content, I could literally hit go because I'm in that list. And if I go to the next one, you can see I'm going right through my test slides here. And that's working rather well. And if I wanted to go to an iMag camera, I'll show you myself hitting these buttons. There I am. And you can see if I were to take this off the air here, I hit this button and it goes off. I still have my iMag camera up. If I want to bring it in, I can bring it in again. And then if I want to take the iMag down, it brings me back to my slides. And if I want to advance them, I just hit the go button again. And I keep going through my slides for each of these decks. And that's how you can configure a stream deck with QLab. Now, one of the things you can also do is you can tell it to only use this profile. So if you get into the profiles here, you can say, all right, you know, this is a profile for QLab can make this the default. But the other thing you can always do is you can bounce this by importing and exporting your build for other shows so that every time you take this on the road, you can load this up and it's ready to go on a different device, just like you would your QLab project file. And that's a little bit about how to use a stream deck to control QLab. And you also saw a little bit about how to control different options within QLab 
for these hotkeys in instances where you want hotkeys to do some heavy lifting outside of the main queue list show file all within the same workspace.